All right. Good morning. Brenda Meller with Meller Marketing. And I am excited to be back for another edition of Social Media Pie. I've got my coffee cup handy and my, my special guest today, Lisa, has a really cool coffee cup with her too. Can you hold it up to the camera a little bit? Yeah. I don't know if you guys can see. It's like, it's kind of like a, it's from <laughs> Starbucks, but it's like a Michigan mug, isn't it? Yeah. So Campus have Park on there. Look at that. Yeah, some. they have like all of them, Germany, wherever, you know, wherever you go. So I have my Detroit one that I, or Michigan, I have a Detroit specific one too, but this is the Michigan one. Love it. My, my cup is not nearly as colorful and eclectic as Lisa's, but I always love seeing a fellow coffee drinker. So, so cheers to you, Lisa, and, and to all of our viewers. Lisa, how are you doing today? I am great. How are you? I am doing good. You know, can't complain. I was really excited getting up to um, to you know kind of get this interview started today, um, and I'm gonna throw the topic up on the screen now. You guys can see why. It's a, it's all about becoming an entrepreneur today, and um, I'll have Lisa introduce herself in a, a little bit here. But she she works in the legal profession, and when I asked her to come on to LinkedIn Live, I said, "What do you want to talk about?" And, and we were brainstorming some different topics and. And I always kind of selfishly, you guys, I'm like, if I can find a topic that is, is of interest to me, I know my viewers would be um, interested as well. But I thought this was really relevant, becoming an entrepreneur. Sometimes um, in these days, too, people are now taking a career shift and they're finding they're no longer working for an organization. They're like, well, maybe I'll start my own business and be my own boss. And, you know, Lisa said we can talk about, you know, some legal and planning issues for, for folks to consider. So so very excited to have you um, lead us in that discussion, Lisa. But before we do so, what I'd like to do is just take a moment and ask you guys see a little ticker running below here. I would love it if you could please leave a comment below and let us know where in the world you're joining us from. I am in Fraser, which is in Macomb County, Michigan. Lisa, where are you located? Is it Troy? Uh, well, my office is in Troy, but currently I'm physically located at my house uh, in Bloomfield Township. Bloomfield Township. Good. And I am in my, my home office in Fraser. Um, sometimes we have people joining from their bedroom, from their kitchen, from their living room, from their front porch. What area of the house are you in, Lisa? I actually have uh, one of my bedrooms set up as my home office and my um, my security staff are, are here, but they're sleeping right now. So. <laughs> You're secure. I love it. I've heard of <laughs> called co-workers. I have not heard of pets being called security staff yet. And um, Lisa told me right before we got on here, guys, she said, I mean, I'm hoping they'll be quiet, but there's what three dogs you said, and, and there's a chance we could get a bark in the background. Yeah, <laughs> two beagles and a Rottweiler. So oh, okay. um, usually they're fine until I get on a phone call. That's usually when. That's how it is. That's, you know, pets and children know when your attention is elsewhere and they want mom. So, you know, I get it. But um, we love guest appearances on social media, Pi Lisa. So if you, if you <laughs> feel inclined to, feel free to bring a pet or two or three into the camera. Um, I know our viewers love seeing some some pets on, on camera too. So that should be fun. Okay. All right. Awesome. So let's get the conversation started here. And if you could, Lisa, why don't you take a minute or two, describe for us who you are, what's your business all about, and then we'll jump into the conversation. Uh, okay, so I'm Lisa Burden. Um, I am the owner of Lynchpin Legal, which is a um, boutique law firm that focuses on the transactional world. So I tell everyone I don't go to court, you don't want me to go to court for you. Um, <laughs> uh, I have people that I can refer for that, but I help with the planning, the contract review, um, reading all of the documents, you know, all of that super exciting stuff that nobody but somebody who majored in English and then went to law school wants to do. <laughs> the legalese, right? <laughs> right. Um, uh, but I, I was a teacher before I went to law school, so I still kind of view my job as teaching people. I'm, um, I don't think that legalese needs to be in contracts. I mean, some of it, you're stuck dealing with a bank and their form contracts, so you're dealing with legalese. Um, Haley! Uh, so, <laughs> um, in that case, you know, we can't really put the document in plain English, but if I'm the one drafting a document, the point is so that everybody can read it. The, the a contract is the rules that you're supposed to abide by. So let's make it so everyone can read it. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I was a high school English and government teacher. Okay. And wow. then I, um, went to law school, uh, because my best friend told me to. <laughs> <laughs> Are, are you glad about that? Are you glad the advice your friend gave you? Uh, most you of the like, time. Why, am not, why am I not a teacher anymore? Yeah, most of the time. Uh, no, I, I also like to eat and I, I taught at a Catholic school, which is a wonderful school. But um, yeah, it, it's it's uh, 
it, it's a calling. Yeah. <laughs> so well, it's a special knack, right? And it's yeah. like, uh, I mean, I was talking to somebody the other day and, and um, I was even, I was talking to my son and he's like, why do people pay you to do LinkedIn? Like, why don't they just do it themselves? I'm like, cause they, they want to find somebody who has expertise. It's kind of like I could change the oil in my car. I could learn how to do that, but I don't want to get my hands dirty. Like I have no desire and other people love getting under the hood of the car and seeing all the mechanics of everything. I mean, that's what makes this world a great place to live in. We all have our unique gifts and talents and we can all help in different ways. Right. Yeah. And you can't be an expert in everything, which is why you hire experts. So, yeah. um, so I, I went to law school, excuse me. I went mm -hmm. to law school, clerked for a Michigan Supreme Court justice for a couple of years, okay. was at a big law firm for 10 years. Um, mm -hmm. And then I found myself in a position to become an entrepreneur, which most lawyers do not want to be. Like they go, they're, they're, they're risk averse. We're trained to think, think about all of the things that could go wrong. Ah, <laughs> so, okay. Um, so I had to get comfortable with that. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I really enjoy working with small businesses um, and small business owners and helping walk them through and, again, teach them yeah. what they need to be concerned about in a contract and what this language means and all of that kind of stuff. So um, I view myself as one of a group of trusted advisors that, that someone starting a small business should have. That includes a financial planner, an accountant, mm -hmm. um, an insurance provider. Mm -hmm. I don't do those things. You know, if you need physical space, a real estate broker. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know what the market is for property. I can just tell you what your legal obligations are in a contract. So you need those people um, mm -hmm. to kind of keep your your sort of the people that you can reach out to and trust and say, hey, do you know anyone right. who can help me with this? Yeah. Um, so I I decided that I was going to start the firm to uh, to focus on sort of that clientele to help them grow their businesses. I, wow. I enjoy seeing the success that my clients have as they're um, trying to navigate the, the new world order. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's sort of uh, my niche is transactional small businesses. I also focus on commercial real estate and really complicated tax credit transactions wow. um, involving that. But today we're going to talk about, hey, you choose to or you're in a position where you need to start your own mm -hmm. shop um yeah. what are some things that you should think about in doing that all right awesome well before we get into that conversation i'm like so excited and, and i don't know about you guys i put a little comment below how many entrepreneurs are watching this show just reply with here you're an entrepreneur watching and as lisa was talking about you know the team that you need to assemble you know um having a legal expert you know somebody with financial planning and insurance i was like yep 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 i was like going through my mental checklist i'm like do i have all those things in place and i've been in business for about three years for my myself but some really great nuggets here already and um just to back up a little bit too lisa and i we actually met through the troy chamber um and it was what a couple couple weeks maybe a month or so back i'm trying to remember it's like a morning jam event if i'm not mistaken yeah like sometime in may okay like, maybe yeah it feels like time is like in some aspects, it's frozen, like we haven't moved from March. And then and then I look up and I'm like, is it seriously June 10th right now? Like, how did that happen? I, I just think that to someone else. It was like, it's like time has simultaneously gone, gotten slower and faster. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> We're in this like, um, what was that movie, Back to the Future, that time continuum, you know, the the 88 gigawatts or whatever that thing was, where it was like, they moved from the, the past to the future and back. And I feel like we're in that warped um, time right now. But at any rate, I had reached out to um, a couple of the Troy Chamber members during the call and I said, hey, what, you know, would anyone like to come and join me on a LinkedIn Live? We're in the time of COVID right now. You know, all of our businesses have kind of slowed down a little bit and, and appointments have been canceled and conferences have been canceled and, and things are starting to come back now. Um, but I know I try to use the time to kind of focus on the gifts and talents I have to help others and, and finding others in my network, you know, people like Lisa to share some of their insights as well. So we heard a little bit of your background, Lisa, um, the backstory that was really interesting kind of coming into, and then now you've kind of selected this niche of helping small business owners who are looking to make that journey into entrepreneurship. And I think, we you know, a while back when we were scheduling this call, we talked about, um, you know, the fact that COVID is impacting a lot of people who maybe were employees of organizations and now are, um, are not, you know, they've either been furloughed, laid off, you know, the company's gone out of business. There's a lot of things happening. There's a lot of unemployment in the market. 
And, you know, there are a couple routes you can take. You don't always have to be a corporate employee, right? You can be your own boss. And um, when we were talking about that, I'm like, you know, there, I think there's probably some folks watching today that are, um, they're already entrepreneurs or they're maybe entrepreneurs that have the little nugget in the back of their brain that's kind of like, maybe, maybe this is something I should think about, but it may feel so overwhelming, overwhelming and daunting. And what you talked about, you know, you were kind of like, averse to the concept as a, as a lawyer and they may have some of those same thoughts going through their process so let's jump in you know someone comes to you and says lisa what do i need to to keep in mind you know what are the legal things i need to be thinking about as i'm starting my business up and then as we go on you know how do i kind of work to plan my business so what advice do you give people so um and I'm going to drop a little bit of stuff that's not really legal, but um, again, I think it's important to think about all of the things that you need to think about, not just the what what paperwork do I have to file. Mm -hmm. I think the, the first thing is kind of getting a plan together. What do you want to do and how much is that going to cost you? Um, and think about all of the costs. Now, if you don't need a physical space, then you're not going to have rental costs. But if you're a retailer, uh, you're probably, unless you're going to online only, um, you're probably going to need a physical store and then you need to know what the you know average rent that you're going to be willing to pay is and figure out where <laughs> flux, flux capacitor. <laughs> I'm like, what was that thing? He threw in the <laughs> and so, then it was like, he had to find garbage in the future because that was like the, the energy <laughs> store. It was like brilliant. You know, you got to look back at them when there was like hoverboards and stuff, you know, thank you, Lee. Thanks for helping. Us. <laughs> um, so, uh, so think about you know what the what your costs are going to be. Um, again, if you're a retailer, you need to think about inventory and what that's going to cost you, and where you're going to find your sources and things like that. For me, um, as a lawyer, I I have the law degree. I need to pay for my bar dues, right? Uh, practice insurance, but I can take my laptop and pretty much go anywhere. I do have physical space as well, um, but a lot of attorneys don't um they just work from home so and you, and you didn't in the beginning i mean you probably were were scaling your business expenses up as you were bringing in revenue so you probably were working from the kitchen table or the basement or, yeah, or so a little bit like growing slowly and um and being conservative with your numbers and things like that and you know quickbooks online is my friend yes. <laughs> you know yeah, me too. I, I had a friend who um i was managing and, and I, fellow entrepreneurs if you're watching this you can probably relate i was like the excel spreadsheet person you know i had my i set up a separate bank account than my, my personal banking. So everything was kind of separated and I had the LLC and everything, but I was doing my um, expense and in, in income management in an Excel spreadsheet until I couldn't manage it anymore. And it was getting unwieldy. And then I think I started asking around um, what are people using and QuickBooks kept coming up. And then um, remember my, my story about the mechanic, you know, I could learn to do the oil in my car, but I don't want to. It was kind of like the same thing with QuickBooks. And um, I tried to self-teach myself because I'm, I'm like, that's my thing. I can self-teach myself everywhere. But I reached a point where um, I was like, I can't, I don't know how to do this. And I started asking around who can help me with QuickBooks. And I didn't want to outsource it, but I um, I found a couple people that recommended different QuickBooks coaches. And um, Yossi Adler was the gentleman that I use. I'll, I'll drop his name in the comments below, but QuickBooks Online, he was the person who's like, yeah, you got to this because you can put it on your phone and and everything. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's good to hear you're, you're referring to that, that same software as well. Yeah, and my particular bank is not connected to it, so I have to do a, a CSV file and then upload it, but it's very simple, and then I just go through once a month and categorize everything, and then I give it, to my accountant has access to the online, and when she does the taxes, she could just go in there, and I don't have to explain anything. Right. Um, so, so those kind of are the non-legal things to think about, and then um, in terms of the, the legal portion of it. You mentioned you have your LLC. So you can set up an LLC or a corporation, or if you're a professional business, like an accounting law firm doctor, we our version is a PLLC, a professional okay. limited liability company, or a um, PC, professional corporation. Um, there are a couple of other kinds of corporate forms. That's a state law issue. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people set up an LLC because uh, if they do that, it's especially if you're a sole proprietor, it's very simple. It's just pa your income just passes through to your personal taxes and you don't have to worry about anything else. I have a question, though. I, I think I know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask you as, as, a, as a lawyer. What are why? Why should someone set up an LLC? You know, what is what what protections does it give you or why? Why bother? Why go through the process of setting so it up? You can start as a sole proprietor. 
Yeah. Lawyers don't like that. <laughs> um, and you shouldn't like it either. Why? Um, generally, uh, mm -hmm. because sole proprietors don't give you it, it, that that form of business doesn't give you any liability protection. Okay. So which means if you are doing some sort of operations, let's say it's a brick and mortar and someone could get physically injured in your store or something like that. If you're operating as a sole proprietor, you don't have a separate legal entity. It's just like me out there, Lisa Burden doing a doing business as. Right. If somebody gets injured on my property or sues me for stealing their intellectual property or anything like that, my personal assets are at stake. Oh, so personal assets, that's your, that's your mortgage. That's my that's house. Your life savings, that's <laughs> right. your 401k. Exactly. I mean, that's your personal assets. They can exactly. come after you. So right. okay. mm. spending the 50 bucks or whatever it is to file for an LLC and get that protection now, just filing the paper doesn't give you the protection, though. Um, okay. There's something called piercing the corporate veil, which means if you don't treat that separate legal entity as separate, if you commingle your bank accounts, if you don't adequately capitalize or get adequate mm -hmm. insurance and things like that, there's a potential that if that person who gets injured sues you, you could they could still go after your personal assets. So you okay. still need to make sure that you have a separate bank account, which is, you know, okay. you get the LLC, you file for uh, an EIN with the IRS, you open a separate bank account, you keep all of that separate from your personal. If you write a purse, like if I happen to have to write a personal check, because I don't have one around, but it's for the business, I reimburse myself. Um, but you keep everything separate. It's not your personal piggy bank. Um, I mean, it could be, you know, you're going to write yourself a check to pay yourself, hopefully. <laughs> right. So um, what about little things like I, I'm, I've had this happen where I've got a couple of cards in my wallet and I, I have my personal banking card and then I have my, my business banking card. And what if I accidentally use my business banking card to make a personal purchase? Is that invalidating the veil or, you know, piercing I mean, the veil? Or, I mean, what, where, where is the line being drawn, I guess? It's... So the best thing, of course, is to keep it completely separate. Right. If you do that, then I would say just, you know, reimburse the company for the personal. Right. Um, or write it off as an owner's draw. Oh, it, it, exactly. Or it's a distribution, right. something distribution. like that. Yeah. Um, okay. But I mean, a one off thing is probably not going to be enough. Right. Um, but again, if you don't have any insurance, like if I didn't have malpractice insurance and I didn't have I took all of the money out of my accounts and didn't keep anything in the, the firm account. Um, it would be very difficult, maybe not impossible to argue that if, I, if I'm still keeping the bank account separate, then that's good enough. But yeah. the more the more distinction you have and the more protection, okay. the better. Okay, um, good. So, and I dropped a couple of the tips I hopefully have captured. So set up an LLC, set up a separate bank account, keep everything separate. Yeah. Give business I mean, insurance, you know. Yeah a corporation and you would get the same protections, the liability okay. protections. Okay. Um, the reason that a lot of uh, people, and again, this is something that, that I would talk to your mm -hmm. accountant about because your okay. personal situation, it depends on how much you think that, you know, revenue you're going to generate and all that kind of stuff. But typically a corporation is like, you know, you, you purchase a corporation, corporation stock, right? So if you right. purchase Ford stock and you, uh, you're a shareholder, you get a dividend. Okay. Ford is taxed on the income that comes into Ford, and then you are taxed on the income that you get as the dividend distributed to the shareholders. Mm -hmm. So that's when you hear double taxation when referencing corporations. It's you're not taxed twice if you write yourself a check out of your LLC to pay a distribution or a draw, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. One one tax event, and that's when you well, that's when the money comes into your company, whether you write yourself a check or not. So, okay. um, you know, it, let's say you keep a cushion in your account. You still, as the sole proprietor of your company, are paying the full tax for that year. Um, and then, you know, you're keeping that as a cushion. You don't pay tax on it again next year, but you're only paying tax once when it shows up on your personal return. Corporate corporations pay the corporate tax and then they also pay they don't also pay. Then you pay as the shareholder when you get right. your distribution, your, your, your individual your dividend. Yeah. So what I mean, I, and I'm, I'm getting into an area and if um, this might be more of a CPA question, but now, you know, this year has been a little bit different. Um, the tax deadline has been changed. Mm -hmm. um, you know, any thoughts on that or, or kind of what what we need to be aware of from a legal perspective or is it more the CPA that would answer that type of question? So um, the CPA would generally know the I mean, I, I 
put a thing on my blog about the filing mm -hmm. deadlines changing till July 15th, but this, um, the, uh, the CPA will be able to help with more technical issues about filing and turning things in and things like that. Okay. Um, now, if you are a small business, you also have to pay quarterly taxes and that I know about because I have to write the quarterly tax check yeah. myself. Um, those are also not due until July 15th, but I'm, you know, getting a little nervous about how much am I going to have to write a check for given COVID and, you know, they yeah. look at last year's in revenue and it's not necessarily going to be the same as this year's revenue. Yeah, that's what I kind of wonder. It's like, I mean, we're going to be over overpaying, you know, yeah. and, and perhaps some of us who haven't been getting a refund in, in recent years because we've been paying, you know, <laughs> next year. And I, I'm going to pull up the blog here. Um, is this the right page that you were from? Yeah, referring absolutely. To? And I, is that, is that your dog or puppy? Who no, is that? that's actually oh. my that's my niece's pit bull puppy. Jack. Aww, very sweet, <laughs> very sweet looking dog. Um, so you mentioned the tax filing deadline. So um, and for those of and this might even be covered in your blog. For so for the, my understanding is for those of us who are who are, who are self employed who are paying taxes. Um, you know, last year we had like a quarterly bill that was due, and I think. I remember like the last one was like January and then you have to get your taxes mm -hmm. done and then they tell you what you owe for April and then June, but now everything. So the April, if I'm remembering correctly, the April and June payments have been delayed until July, but I thought my CPA said, but actually you need to get the April in by June. Is that, do you know anything about that? Or is that? Uh, no, I was under the impression that the, the, um, the April deadline was pushed to July along with the filing deadline. Okay. Okay. But I don't know that the later quarterly payments have been changed or if those are still going to be due when they would normally be due. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I, I'm one of those people. I'm like a um, procrastinator. You know, I, I, yeah. I'm not a, I mean, I'm a marketing person. You guys, if you give me something marketing to do, I'll do it. But it's like accounting and taxes and stuff. I'm like, oh, I just I, I got to organize everything and get my mileage pulled together and my receipts a little bit more in order. Yeah, um, I was just to actually pull my mileage together last night um, because I, I have a, an app. So you can do it under QuickBooks, uh, but I don't. I have a, a Mile IQ, which is a yeah. mileage app okay. um, that just tracks everything in the background. Um, so, you know, even if you're using public transportation or riding in someone else's car, it, it tracks your mileage. So then you have to separate you know, that this was not me or it was public transportation right. and you separate it between business meeting and personal commuting. Commuting is not deductible. You know, you don't, you don't get to deduct that because yeah. going to the office back and forth is that's everybody does that. Is um, it? I like you because I want to pull it up on screen. Yeah, that's it. Somebody's going to say, what was that app again? And this yeah. works. And Lisa, I think this works if you use it as you go. But today is June 10th. And if I need to go back in arrears and do my mileage for 2019, if you have, if you had this, yeah, it, you can go back and classify. Can you? But okay. Yeah, if you if you just got the subscription and it's there's a free version, but it only tracks like 30 drives, which right oh, now okay. is a big deal. <laughs> but right, I know, like I haven't even done like 30 drives in the past. <laughs> Two months, three months even. <laughs> um, but normally that may not be enough because it is tracking everything, you know, okay. your trips to the grocery store on Saturday or whatever. That's true. Uh, so yeah, but it, it is it is helpful for that. Um, okay. But unless you're, you know, you've got to keep some sort of contemporaneous records. So, you know, either you're doing something like this or QuickBooks or you're writing it in a you know pamphlet every time you go somewhere to say this was a business meeting and, you know, not right running to the store. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that is a pain. So I was working on my mileage and yeah. my, uh, a couple of other things that my account needs last night. So <laughs> okay, so I, I, I feel better because you're like, you're like this totally got together all professional person. And I'm like, I'm like, I got a bin I got I was actually my husband's, um, you know, gonna help me put together but I need to like categorize things before I give it to him to, to, you know, sort things. And I'm like, I, I'm like, gosh, it's the 10th. I want to get it in. I want to get it in. And and my CPA has been really great. And I reached out to her periodically and she's nudged me, you know, to get it done. But it's like, I, I, I should just get it done. And um, I've done a really good job of um, keeping my account separate and I've pulled money aside for taxes. So I've got an account sitting. It's not like I need to scramble it to pull it together, but it's just a, the act of sitting down and doing something that I don't enjoy doing. <laughs> is yeah, Unless you're a CPA, I think we all kind of feel like, 
Yeah. Um, I'd rather stick forks in my eyeballs, but um, <laughs> <laughs> see, I was going to say it, but I'm like, I didn't want to offend anybody who was like an accountant watching this. Right? Uh, but, you know, some people are like that with like, you know, with legal questions or with marketing or social media or LinkedIn questions. And, you know, we all, um, you know, this is what makes the world go round. We all have passions in different areas. And I think the great thing, um, and what I'm picking up from you, Lisa, is you've got a mind for this from a legal perspective, all of the things that you need to be aware of and the resources and the network of people um, that you can refer to people. And, and that's why you're a success in what you do because you're passionate about it. You were made for this. I, that's what I can kind of see. And, you know, I was made for what I'm doing. And, um, <laughs> you know, even in the economy and where right now, I am still glad to be my own boss. My boss is like the best boss in the entire world. And, um, I'm so happy with my company and where, where things are and stuff. And, you know, we'll all, we'll all get out of it, but it's good to have somebody like you to help those that are just getting started through the process, um, to think about, you know, planning and different resources. So yeah, really, really yeah, got awesome. Really. And I, I, I was thinking when you we said earlier, you know, a lot of people are thinking about starting their own business. They may have lost their jobs, whatever, yeah. you know, the most businesses were created, um, the, the last time there was a, the, the, the great recession. Right. Um, mm -hmm that was when a large portion of businesses were started because people lost their jobs. So they were like, I got to do something. Either yeah. I go find another job in a market where I can't, or right. I, I go ahead and try this thing and see if right. it works and you know, what's the worst that can happen. Yeah. Um, so I, it's not necessarily a bad time. Um, again, you just need to plan. Mm -hmm. um, so, so we talked about the corporate formation, right? You yep. can form as an LLC or as a corporation. Um, okay. There's also the tax ramifications, which are separate. So there's, I'm an LLC. The mm -hmm. IRS doesn't recognize LLC. Like that's not a thing for tax purposes. Okay. So for tax purposes, uh, again, um, you and I are sole proprietors, right? right? You, don't, you don't have anyone else in your business. So mm -hmm. that's very easy because that's called a pass through. The single member LLC is just passes through to your personal tax return. Okay. Um, if you have partners, things become much more complicated. And again, tax lawyers and accountants <laughs> deal with all of the tax ramifications of it. But that's where, you know, let's say that you've got four people and they each have 25% of the business. Um, each of them, you, you the if your tax is a partnership, um, each of those people gets split, you know, the profits and losses get split among them, usually in, in proportion to their percentage interest. So you get 25% of any gains or losses. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a really important thing to get a, an accountant who actually knows partnership tax because, you know, not every guy who files tax returns mm -hmm. does partnership tax. That's a good point. So ask when you're looking to work with a CPA, do you have experience in this area? Or, you know, on the flip side, you know, if you are shifting into a new area, the person that's been doing your individual taxes for you all along or for you and your spouse or you and your partner all along may no longer be a fit if they don't right. have your area of expertise. So, so do you have like a list of people you refer people to? I do. Um, like, okay. the way I do referrals for anything, whether it's another yeah. attorney in an area that I don't do, mm -hmm. we'll get to one of those areas in a minute, um, yeah. or, um, an accountant or financial advisor or whatever is, as I give a list of three or four people and kind of right. give the client or the, the contact a, you know, this is a little bit about each of these people, you know, okay this person specializes in this area or whatever so that they can say, okay, well, this is what I'm looking for. And, you know, I give them the contact information for all of them, but that way they have kind of a flavor of. Yeah. They can shop around. Cause I think you gotta, there's a personality fit. I mean, I, I've uh, interviewed some people and tried working with some people in different areas and I'm like, it just, they seem very smart. They seem like very nice people. I've just, it's, I'm not clicking. Really with click. them. And you almost want like to work with somebody who can almost finish your sentences. Like they know what you're going to ask before you even finish asking it right. and who can kind of anticipate that. Right. And the problem with legal and accounting and probably even marketing in some ways, cause I, uh, we talked just before this, like I, I'm, have no brain for creativity at all. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I need someone like you with your expertise to do those kinds of things. Right. Um, but in a lot of areas, we don't even know the questions to ask. So mm -hmm. I, I want to have somebody that where my client goes to them and says, I have this problem um, that the person I referred them to can say, okay, 
here are the things that you need to think about that you didn't even know you needed to think right. about. Because right. Because it's not, it's not always like the, the question. It's, I mean, and sometimes I had legal advice and I go in and I, I ask the question, but then the person's like, well, there are four other things that are kind of in that category that you haven't asked. Would you like an information as well? I'm like, well, I didn't aware. I wasn't even aware of that. So, um, you know, people who have that depth of knowledge can, and, and people like you can help to kind of shore that up. Right. Right. And so, um, so we so we talk about the tax issues and of course corporate tax is different yeah you'll also hear about something that some organizations will file as which is an s corp mm -hmm. the difference between a c corp and an s corp is um well the s corp is kind of a pass through as well but okay. a lot of uh companies will choose s corporations because if uh, again using our example anything mm -hmm. that that um, comes out of our accounts to us as a distribution or a draw right. is uh, taxable. We pay self-employment tax on, we can't W-2 ourselves, right? right? Okay, right. No big deal. That's just how we do it. And we pay, instead of payroll tax, we pay self-employment tax. Yeah. But if you have four partners and one of them is working hard in the business and needs to get paid a salary as partners, you can't really do that because they have to that's all considered a draw. So right. if you file as an S corporation, then people working for the company, even if they're owners in the company can take a wage. Um, so okay. the only, the reason they're called S and C is that's the section of the internal revenue code that they're gotcha. in. Okay. I was going to ask, I was like, what does that letter so, mean? But I didn't so, want to be like that person who's like not knowing, yeah, like everybody, so, everybody knows what S corp and C corp, except Brenda, you know, why should you ask that question? <laughs> Both lawyers don't even know. So no. it's, it's some chapter S. I started out in tax law and it was okay. awful. Uh, again, wanted to stick forks in my eyes. So <laughs> I, um, I, I know enough to know when there are issues and say, go get a tax attorney or a CPA. <laughs> it's good though. You figured out when you got into the field, what you enjoy doing and what you um, abhor to doing, you know, right. like what you would prefer to refer off to other people. Or and I do, I do nonprofit law and oh, okay. um, the, the tax incentives related to commercial real estate. So I still do play in the internal revenue code a little bit, but okay. in specific sections Yeah, um, and not the partnership tax at all. Cause that's super mm -hmm. complicated. So, yeah. um, so, so you have your corporate, that's your okay. state form. Then you've got your, how you're going to be taxed. Yeah. Um, partnership, C corp, S corp. Um, and then some other issues that people should think about. One of the biggest things I tell people, and I don't do this area, so this is not trying to get more business or anything. It's not a sales pitch. Anybody who has any sort of intellectual property that they um, are concerned about, for example, if they think that they have a product that they want to sell nationally, okay, they're not going to do that right away, but they think, you know, I've got this great widget and I could go on Shark Tank and, you know, become a millionaire and sell it all across the country. Well, if somebody else chooses that name before you get to Shark Tank yeah. and they're out there selling the widget with your name on it, mm -hmm. you now have to come up with a different name. Mm -hmm. Or it's like Burger King. Burger King, um, there's one place in Illinois where Burger King cannot operate. Because, really? Uh, yeah, because before they got their uh, trademark, there was a mom and pop shop called Burger King. Awesome. And I love it. <laughs> in that region, it has the rights to use that name. Really? Even though it's a powerful brand, they couldn't. So they know, did it first. Bully them so, out or I don't know. It just seems crazy. Yeah. Um, I mean, they could have possibly tried to, but um, I think now maybe that's changed and they have actually. So, sorry. That's, no, that's okay. No, I just think um, it's because I heard something once upon a time and it was a coffee shop. I want to say it was like Mount Clemens or something. And they had a name or a logo or something that looked similar to Starbucks and Starbucks went after them. And then the coffee yeah. shop, I think, ended up going out of business. And I was talking to my younger sister and she and I are both coffee drinkers. And I was saying something about going to get Starbucks and she's like, I'm not going to Starbucks ever. She's like, they ran my coffee shop out of business. <laughs> well, um, so the problem with that is, again, I don't practice intellectual property, so I know enough to be dangerous. But yeah. the problem with that is... Um, I have a a contact that used to um, do, I think she still does. I just mm -hmm. don't have contact with her anymore, but she used to do um, like embroidery and buy patterns online. Yeah. Yeah. Like patterns or whatever. And, you know, embroider your house towels or whatever. Yeah, aprons. And, and, yeah. right. and um, her, there were some Harley Davidson things on this website and Harley Davidson sent this, you know, freebie site or whatever, a cease and desist letter. Well, they have to, because if they pick and choose mm -hmm. who they're, um, 
who they're going after, then that could that could dilute their brand. Right. Um, and they there could be an argument later that, oh, no, you didn't really pursue it. So you didn't want it. So they have right. to go after everybody that they learn about. Gotcha. Um, yeah. So, you know, there are ways to do it where they're kind of kind and nice about it. Like, I think there was a place in Missouri that kind of sent a, a cheeky cease and desist letter. Yeah, like a cease before. and desist, which means like stop doing it is the cease and yeah. what desist means don't do it so anymore. Lawyers, we have to have 15 words to say the same thing. So, right. so, so basically <laughs> it's a stop and stop letter. Stop and stop. Is that what it means? Right? <laughs> like, really? Um, so yeah, so so anyway, it, it's really important that if you have a name or a logo that you want, I actually had a conversation with a, a local contact about this kind of in reverse. Mm -hmm. She has a name she's been using for a long time, um, but there is another company that is coming into town that mm -hmm. has, has the name trademarked okay. nationally and they come into town. Now she should still have the right to use the name locally if she's been using it first. Yeah. But there's then going to create this sort of confusion in the marketplace because, you know, if I'm using Lynchpin and you're also using Lynchpin and it's for something similar. Now, if you're using Lynchpin and you're selling Lynchpin marketing Lynchpin, services, right? Totally right. Different. Yeah. And it's probably not going to be confusion, but if okay. You know, if I'm linchpin legal with an I and then like there is actually a linchpin with a Y in Wales or Australia or something because mm -hmm. they spell different. Um, but if they came, they decided to come into Michigan and use linchpin legal with a Y, there could be some confusion there. Right. In our services. Yeah. So it's really important. And it usually uh, intellectual property attorneys charge a flat fee. Okay. for filing your trademark or copyright. It's a separate fee for each one. So, you know, you want your name first. And then if you have a particular logo that you're going to want to use right. you your logo, every time you do that, or you use a different, um, you know, you can TM your taglines, okay. uh, right? Um, and I would think of some national one, but of course, nothing's coming to my head right now. Yeah. Um, well, let me give you a for example. I'll, I'll say I have a friend who um, <laughs> is writing is writing a book and it has a name of that book. And, and this friend also has reserved the social media properties with that same mm -hmm. name. But this friend has not yet um, trademarked it or, or gone through that that process. Um, the book is in draft, so it's not like out there yet. Um, you know, at what point should this trademark protection be sought? Is it now before before this said person publishes or doesn't publish the book or is it afterwards? So what does that happen? You actually, you have a couple of different things. You've got the trademarking, mm -hmm. but so you have trademark, copyright and patent, okay. right? Okay. So your book, the content of your book is copyrighted. Okay. As soon as you write something, you own the copyright in it. Okay. So the, there's a couple of different things that happen. Do you have to file for that to get copyright protection or is it automatic? You don't. You yeah. automatically have it. Like if okay. I do a, a marketing brochure and I put a, you know, a copyright 2020 on it. I just put it on there and that makes it official. This is kind of like me putting my flag saying this was written by Brenda Meller, so I own it. Yes. Right. But because uh -oh. so, we're lawyers, it's always yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> so the difference, uh, for my understanding, is um, the difference in um, filing nationally with the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office is mm -hmm. a couple of things. Okay. One, with a trademark, your brand is now national, so you can okay. go to, um, you know, Honolulu or Denver, Colorado. Ooh, I think I will somebody, go to Honolulu. I mean, she will go to Honolulu. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Right. And if somebody's using Miller Marketing in Honolulu, you can tell them stop and stop. Okay. Um, so um, so I, I need do I need to be trademarking my business name, too, then? Unless you are. So there are a couple of reasons to do it. I think okay. it, it's a little more. I'm more concerned about it with retailers or somebody who's creating something that's going to go national. Right, right. Okay. You can, you can probably work nationally. Like I can't. Right. So, yeah. um, but you. So it provides perfect protection on a national level. So somebody else. So if I had like a second cousin in Utah, who is also in the marketing field and created a Meller marketing and a part of what they offered was LinkedIn strategy coaching. And then there's some confusion. People are looking for LinkedIn help. They go to my, my second, right. cousin, you know, and then I say, well, wait, that was my business. And um, so I could see that. Yeah. yeah. So unless there's something like like that, I mean, there's yeah. it's never a bad idea to, but there's like it's not as much of a necessity as right. something that where 
again, like if you're a Tim Hortons, you want that yeah. name because you want to expand globally. And yeah, you don't want you don't want brand dilution. You don't want somebody jumping on and essentially what a production is somebody else jumping on your coattails, going, "Well, gosh, Meller Marketing is a really good name. My name is right. Miller. I'll just use Meller because she's already established her brand presence exactly. out there. I can use the name. And people will confuse yeah. it, and so they I they will like think I'm really more experienced than I am because. Right. Brenda has 20 years of experience and I have six months. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah. The, you know, that could be useful, uh, but the other thing is like with logos and things like that. So there is a place that I don't know if it still exists, but it was over a uh, gross point. Okay. I used to live on East side of Detroit. So I used to drive by it and I'm like, huh, I don't think hard rock cafe has figured these guys out. Cause it was a little restaurant, but and the name was not, hard rock but, but it, it was a knockoff it was, it was close enough where you're like oh yeah i see what you're going there it right record. it was clearly yeah. a play on hard rock yeah. um so again if you're just you know kind of one off in the middle of nowhere are yeah. you going to get caught but if they did they you know a cease and desist letter would be forthcoming okay. um and so you want to make sure that you have the protection there. And again, like I said, it's usually a flat fee and what the uh, intellectual mm -hmm. property attorney will do or their assistant um, will, they'll search the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. So if you are have not started a business yet and you're like, I think that Toys R Us is a fabulous idea because I want right. to sell toys, right? Yeah. Um, and what a great are they, idea. Are they still around? I think they've got like a couple stores that are sprouting back up again, aren't they? Yeah, they filed for okay. bankruptcy protection, but I think they yeah. were doing some reorg. Um, so. Yeah. But let's assume that that didn't actually exist. So we're going to do, a, yeah. never. we've never heard of Toys R Us. So I'm going to I'm gonna create a Toys R Us. Mm -hmm. so they're going to go to the Patent and Trademark Office and do a search. Mm -hmm. and say, is there anything similar Okay. The toys are us. And, and this is something you could do. I, I remember it's like a website. You can yep. go on it and find it and, and search yourself, yes. right? You can search yourself. So if you want to do a quick search. And the other thing you mentioned earlier was the, the social media that your friend has. For my the, friend. For you guys remember my friend, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> my The person who did, a friend of mine did my website and everything. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things that she commented on, and again, this is not a legal issue. So it's not something that I thought of. She was, when I was looking for a name for my business was, Okay, the first thing we need to do is go see if those websites for any of the names that you're considering are even available. Right. Um, so that's that's more of the social media side of it. It's not the legal side, but you don't want to come up with a name and then go, oh, well, I can't get the dot com for yeah. that. And, and on that note, too, anybody who's watching this show, if you're thinking about starting your own business, um, do what I did. I reserved the social media handles for Meller Marketing before mm -hmm. Meller Marketing was really a thing. It was kind of like a concept in the back of my head, but I went out and reserved all the names. And then the same thing for the thing that I'm working on for my book title and my other, you know, kind of uh, extension of my business. As soon as it started getting a little bit of traction, I reserved the URL. If you visit it, it redirects you to Meller Marketing. I reserved all of the social mm -hmm. media sites, you know, the major sites in my name. There was one I couldn't get. It was a defunct site nobody's using anymore, but I had a variation of it. So I did all of those things. And I'm just looking at the time, Lisa. I could talk to you for hours. I mean, it's been um, a really great conversation so far. And I've been kind of pulling comments up on the screen. So I don't think that we had any additional questions come in from folks. You know, I, I've kind of been you know, asking questions as, as we go here. And for those of you who may be joining a little bit late and um, didn't hear the initial topic, it's, you know, becoming an entrepreneur, legal and planning issues to consider. And I want to speak to anybody who's watching right now who is on the fence. Maybe you have been furloughed, laid off, um, you're finding yourself in career transition for the very first time. Maybe it's not the first time you've gone through this and you're kind of fed up with corporate. Um, and you are also realizing you have some unique skills that could be marketable in today's economy and, and once, you know, things start to rebound in the future. Um, you know, my advice for you guys is to, to look up, you know, Lisa on LinkedIn and I'm going to pull, I'm going to see if I can navigate to this right now, Lisa. Um, I'm going to pull your profile up on screen. And as I do so, I just want to see, Lisa, if you'd like to share any final comments with folks, um, any Final pieces of advice, any shout outs you'd like to give, any resources you'd like to to mention as we start to wrap the conversation here today? Yeah, so you can always um, check out my blog, which I post to um, both to LinkedIn and Twitter. Um, and now that I have my name corrected on Facebook, my Facebook page, <laughs> um, I, I try to do something that sort of 
sometimes timely, sometimes it's just like, what is this word that seems to be legalese that no one else understands? Like, what is a subordination in a lease? What does that mean? Yeah. Okay. So, um, that's, you know, kind of pushed out throughout my social media. Um, I would just say as a closing thought would be, um, find people that you can trust. Mm -hmm. And that means, you know, vet them. Yeah. Um, because there are lots of people in various industries who will pretend that they know more than that they know mm -hmm. because they don't want to walk away from the work mm -hmm. um, and you don't want to be their guinea pig. Um, so if, you know, you get a, re a recommendation and then you Google the person and it doesn't appear on their website that they do anything related to intellectual property, right. um, maybe that's not the person you should use to file your, your trademark. You know right. what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. But get your group of trusted advisors. And yes, it's going to cost you money up front to have an accountant and an attorney. Mm -hmm. um, but it's going to be cheaper to get that up front. Yeah. Than you have to deal with a mess later. Yeah, that's very true. Um, and while I would love to take your money to deal with a mess, I'd rather mm -hmm. just help you up front and, mm -hmm. um, and make sure that you're set up on a path to success. And if you find someone that you trust, again, your CPA, your financial advisor, all of those people, they should be the type of people who will tell you, look, you don't need me to do that. Mm -hmm. For example, I will tell you, as a single member LLC, you probably don't need me, you can go file your LLC, you mm -hmm. may eventually need an operating agreement, but you're in business with yourself. It's not right. really necessary like it is with partners. Right. Um, you're not going to say, hey, we didn't agree to that. Yes, we did. No, we didn't. You're not going to do that, right? And, right. and it's, that's what legal agreements are. They're not for when times are good. It's for when there is, you know, when, when you're deciding to move the business in a different direction or there's a disagreement about what you agreed upon and you put those agreements and those legal documents in place right. when times are good. And at the beginning of, you know, when I contract with a client, I, I outline things at the beginning so that I am protected, so that they are clear on what they are getting as a result of our partnership. So there's no confusion. It's just, it's, we want to keep things nice, you guys. Yeah, a friend of mine uh, referenced to uh, specifically operating agreements, but pretty yeah. much any contract is a prenuptial agreement for the relationship. Yeah. So, yeah. We all outline everything so that we know what the expectations are. And then in the event that we need to part ways, this is what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, but again, you know, if you may need as a single member LLC, if you're going to go borrow money from a bank, they're going to want to see yeah. an operating agreement and a consent resolution, even though you're the one signing both sides. Yeah. But until something like that happens, you're probably fine doing some of it on your own. Yeah. Um, and, <clears throat> and I will tell you that because... I, I want you to keep coming back to me. I don't want it to be a one-off relationship where you're like, okay, well, that's great. Yeah, she, yeah. she took no, my money, awesome. but that wasn't really helpful. <laughs> no, this has been great, Lisa. And I can tell you are just a, a huge resource to small businesses. And um, I, I now know a little bit more about you after having talked to you today as well. And I just want to thank you for sharing your time and your expertise with all of us today. And it was really a joy talking to you. So thank you so much. Well, thank you for having me. This has been fun. Good. And I will see you at a Troy Chamber event soon. Do you know what the next one is that you're registered for? We're all virtual right now. I, I don't know. Yeah, no, I haven't looked at the uh, the recent list of things going on. I know we have a, so I'm the past mm -hmm. chair of the board. So I know I have a board meeting next week. And oh, that's there you go. Cool. Okay. <laughs> so you know you got that coming up, right? Yeah, <laughs> like um, part of it. And but. I have not been to any of the um, trivia nights yet. So I may try to make one of those. I yeah, those are fun. It's, it's just social and it's, um, it's a way to get to know other members. And I, I remember one day I had like two webinars scheduled. They were both like educational learning. And then it was like the Troy happy hour. I'm like, oh, I'm going to that or tri trivia night. And I, was like, I just needed a, a, a mental break. And I wanted to see people, you know, other, yeah. I love the people in my house. I love them all. But I wanted to see other faces of other people you know, at that point in the day. So, yeah, sort yeah. of getting to the point where it's like, I just want human contact that is not the same person I've been with for the last 86 days. <laughs> no, I, yeah, I hear you. We're all, we're all there. All right, Lisa. Well, thank you so much for your time. And um, for the viewers watching us here today, if you happen to be watching this in playback, still leave a comment below. And Lisa, I did see a few comments that came up, you know, some additional um, questions coming in here. And I will tag Lisa in the post so that she can go back and answer any of your questions and feel free to connect with her on LinkedIn. When you connect with her, make sure that you mention that you saw her on the LinkedIn live video. And if there was any tips that were particularly compelling or helpful for you, tell her that as well. And definitely check out her, her website as well. And I think I had that up on the screen earlier. 
um, I think I added in the blog. I wanted to show that real quick before we leave here. So this is her website for, for the blog where you can go and check out the blogs and the resources and you can go to lynchpinlaw.com to learn more. And as we finish off, I have share the video. Make sure if you're watching this, after you leave here today, go back and share the video with your network. Tag an entrepreneur or two in the comments um, before you leave here as well. And you know they may learn some, some new techniques. There might be an entrepreneur to be, somebody who's thinking about starting a business that might really find Lisa's tips helpful. And then do make sure also that you're going to mellermarketing.com slash subscribe so that you can get notification of future LinkedIn live videos from me. All right, guys, have a great day. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you online again soon. Take care.